Bah. Uh, I had to make sure it was actually recording. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, wait a second, was that real? Good thing we didn't miss that really cool sound we made. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the Brothers Game Podcast. Hello. I'm Nikolai. It's me, Brian. Uh, Brian, it's been about a month since we recorded this podcast, yes. which, which means we actually have a lot to talk about. Yes. Agreed. And most importantly, it's my birthday. Yep. In like an hour. Happy so, birthday. Tomorrow. So, that's exciting. Mm. I've now been a father for three months, just about. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> yes, that has been a very fast three months. And, uh, yeah, that's about that. He's still really awesome. Mm. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about What are we talking about, Brian? Um, well, the listeners have waited far too long. We've teased it too many times. So tell us about your shiny ex- escapades. Oh, okay. In Pokemon. Yeah, I may have been, I may have been shiny hunting. Well, this all started, uh, last month. Uh, if you are all not aware, uh, on April 8th, just about a month ago, the, online servers for the 3ds and the wii u were shut down Mm -hmm. okay meaning all 3ds and wii u games cannot play over the internet anymore yep so no no trading over the internet in pokemon games no playing together in mario kart on the wii u stuff like that so everyone was freaking out Mm -hmm. (laughs) um specifically for x and y so as you know, X and Y are probably my favorite Pokemon games, and um, it has a Safari Zone, mm-hmm. which I hadn't really dabbled with much. Yeah. But this Safari Zone is is like dependent on having friends online uh-huh. and and doing stuff with people online. So that's why everyone was kind of kind of freaking out about it. Um, so after looking into it a little bit and figuring out what's the point of it, how does it work exactly? Uh, I was also jumping on board with it. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, okay, I got to do this. Um, so I'll very briefly explain that the safari zone is a bunch of little safaris. Mm -hmm. It's called the friend safari. Yeah. Um, and every safari in your list of, of ones you can visit are based on your friends on your th- on your 3DS. So not, you know, mm. other people you've traded with or anything like that. It's particularly linked to the system's friends list. Okay. And on the 3DS, you have a maximum of, a- of 100 friends. Mm-hmm. And so you can't have more than 100 friend safaris uh, to go into. And the safari always consists of the safari always consists of i messed up one of those words uh, <laughs> but i don't remember <laughs> which it consists of three pokemon <clears throat> wow i haven't talked like this in a long time uh uh-huh. i don't talk to my baby that much um so it consists of three pokemon and it will be those three pokemon no matter what you do it's based on your system not okay. based on the game cartridge you're using or anything like that. It's linked to your system. So every 3DS has a different friend Safari, which I thought was kind of interesting yeah. that it wasn't like uh, the, the game cartridge. And so, for instance, mine was a water type Safari. Okay. And the three Pokemon slots were Octillery, Gyarados, and Azumarill. Okay. So that is my friend Safari. So if I friend somebody online, they will get my Safari and it will always be that water safari okay and so basically there's a certain pokemon that can be in those three slots so for a water safari for instance the first slot can have octillery in it or like two or three other pokemon and so it's totally random what you get and so what Mm -hmm. it turned into is people on twitter and reddit especially there's like r slash friend safari people swapping codes and being like this is my friend safari what's your safari Mm -hmm. i I really need your safari for whatever reasons because obviously some pokemon are a lot more sought after than others yeah and you might think what's the point of this exactly um because you know most of them are pokemon you can get just in the game Uh some of them aren't though Mm. there's pokemon like zebstrika who is only available through friend safari Mm. in generation six yeah like 
period, in all of Gen 6. So some of those are particularly sought after. Uh, but the most important thing for me was that shiny odds are increased yeah. in the Friend Safari. The shiny odds in the Friend Safari, while you have the shiny charm, are like 1 in 500, <laughs> which is about as good as shiny odds get, period. Yeah. They're, that's like Masuda method breeding, but it's way faster than breeding. Yeah. Um, that's like a level three sandwich in Scarlet and Violet. Like it's like, that is as good as shiny, shiny hunting gets. And because I have the shiny charm in my X and Y games, uh, it was very tempting for me. Mm -hmm. So there was about three days leading up to April 8th. So this was like sixth, seventh and eighth. I was on the the subreddit especially like crazy <laughs> like mm -hmm. by far that is the most posts or comments i've made on reddit ever yeah. um uh of just like swapping codes looking for specific pokemon uh i remember uh, i had a hard time finding um like uh well, well so like first off i really wanted to get the starters mm -hmm. so you can get the kanto starters and the uh Kal kalos Kalos starters as well. Mm -hmm. So like Frogadier, they're always their middle evolutions for some reason, because they're always level 30 in okay. the Friend Safari. So you can get Breaks in and Frogadier and Quilladin and Ivysaur, Charmeleon, and Wartortle. Eventually I was able to collect safaris that had both sets of starters in one safari. So mm -hmm. like a grass safari that had Ivysaur and Quilladin and something like that. So yeah. like I was like, heck yeah, you know, there. And then there's all obviously like normal type ones that have an EV are always going to be very sought after. Yeah. Um, I think the one sought after one I didn't get was like a steel one that had um, Matang in it. Okay. Like the, you know, the Metagross line. Yeah. But not too big of a deal. Um, I had a hard time finding uh, a Spiritomb one, but I finally did get one. Mm. There, there are some ghost safaris with Spiritomb. Um, and so the other hard part about this is that when you add somebody as a friend, you only get the first two slots, not the third Pokemon slot. Okay. To get the third Pokemon slot, which is usually the good one, that's the Spiritomb, the Eevee, yeah. the Quilladin, Frogadier, stuff like that. Um, you have to both be online, like literally connected to the internet specifically at the same time. And you both have to have, um, well, I guess it doesn't matter if you have, but they have to have beaten the Elite Four in their game. Uh. So they have to be in X or Y or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, have having beaten the Elite Four, mm -hmm. and be online with you at the same time. <laughs> so that where, is where it got difficult sometimes. <laughs> I think I still have some safaris that are only the first two slots um, because you can't trust everybody to do yeah. that to do that all the time. So you have to be helpful also. It was the most community-driven thing I've done in video games in a long time. And that actually made it really fun. Yeah. Because I was like, you were, it was very like people working together, basically. And everyone was pretty friendly. And like um, that made it actually pretty fun. And it turns out mine was sought after enough that people were pretty happy to exchange friend codes with me. So that was nice. Um, by the end, the only one I was looking for was Skarmory was a mm. steel one with Skarmory okay. because Skarmory is a good shiny, I think. Mm. Um, and so I was like on Reddit every like hour, like looking cause people were making comments constantly, mm -hmm. but I found out I could search keywords in like comments and stuff. Yeah. So I was just searching Skarmory. <laughs> And just scouring, uh, you know. And by the end, by the eighth, people were like capped out on friends. Like yeah. they were at a hundred friends. I know I did that fairly quickly. Um, and so it got really heated there at the end. But I pretty much, I think I got everything I could possibly have wanted. Um, I'm pretty, I was very pleased to see how many Gen 6 Pokemon there were. Mm -hmm. Because Gen 6 Pokemon have a lot of good shinies, mm -hmm. I've found. Like, in general, they just have very good shinies in Gen 6. And so I'm actually possibly going to try and get all of the shinies in Gen 6. Oh, every, wow. every Gen 6 Pokemon has a shiny. 
maybe not like a full living dex, but at least one from each line possibly. Cause I think I'm already halfway there <laughs> basically. Yeah. So that was the three days of getting friend safaris, which I didn't even know I wanted, you know, but uh, before then, but, um, after all that, I was like, I mean, I got to shiny hunt a little bit now <laughs> in uh-huh. these and see like if this is actually viable. I mean, it says one in 500 on the internet, but like how good is it really? Yeah. And so I went with a, I started on a dragon safari that had a uh, Noibat fracture. I think that's like the Haxorus line mm-hmm. and Noibat has a really good shiny. So that's what I was going for. Um, and I'm pretty sure I got the Noibat in about an hour. Yeah. And just like basically no time. I'm like, okay, that was pretty cool. And then I got, and then I was looking in an electric safari, you know, I was looking for helioptile or something like that. And I got a shiny Luxio like in an, like an hour later. <laughs> uh-huh. And then uh, I went back to a different uh, dragon one and I got a shiny Gabite not that much later. Uh, I was doing this for like maybe a week uh-huh. where I was doing it fairly often. And I was averaging like three shinies a day. Uh-huh. It's like, it's really insane. <laughs> it's it's a very good shiny hunting method. Um, and like I, I mentioned before, like episodes ago, I was I was like breeding for like in a shiny Esper, you know, doing doing these X and Y Pokemon a little bit. Uh, this made it much quicker mm-hmm. <laughs> to get specific Pokemon. Um, I'll say now I'm looking at my boxes. I have 34 shinies, <laughs> 34 from like a week of Safari Zone hunting. It was not all fun and games. Yeah, <laughs> I will I will tell you that. Uh, I hit a roadblock. My first one, um, I was looking for the Pokemon Inkay, mm-hmm. which, you know, is a little squid thing. Yep. Uh, it has the ability suction cups, which is actually helpful outside of battle because it helps you fish. It makes oh. it so Pokemon bite much more often when you're fishing. And fish chaining is a great way to shiny hunt in x and y Mm. so i was like how cool would it be if i had a shiny malamar to shiny hunt with basically was was my idea and i already had this idea for collecting all the gen 6 shinies so i might as well get this one so i was like no problem Mm -hmm. in case no big deal so i would i can barely easily tell by looking at my box that the (laughs) this friend safari was mighty yenna crawdont and inke Okay, mm-hmm. that was the three. I I have I now have two shiny mighty Yenas and two shiny Crawdont. <laughs> <laughs> that happened before I got a uh, shiny Inke. See, that's the problem with shiny hunting when there's three different Pokemon it can be. You you, you don't always get what you want, right? Uh, they call that. I recently found out they call that phasing mm. in shiny hunting. Okay, you phase on a Pokemon. Um, when you get a shiny that's not the one you're going for okay so like um the mighty the first mighty Yenna made it so i'm now on phase one for inke and then i got a crawd out now i'm on phase two for inke yeah. so by phase five i had an inke <laughs> wow luckily mighty Yenna is pretty cool crawd a fine shiny so that was all right i then had my first failed shiny hmm this is my first failed shiny encounter, I think, since, like, 2009 or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, I don't often fail shiny hunt encounters. So, I was looking for Quilladin. Mm-hmm. That is Chespin's evolution, the middle okay. evolution. A lot of people hate this Pokemon. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to show it to you. They think he just looks like a weird little man, which I kind of understand. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think he's kind of cute, though. Anyway, it's got a good shiny, though. That red, right? Mm. Like that maroon. I think that's a nice shiny. So, spoilers, I got it eventually. But um, I was going at it in this grass uh, friend safari. I got a uh, Ivysaur first, mm-hmm. um, which I'll take that. Ivysaur is super cool. That's mm-hmm. a great shiny. Um, but so it was phase one for Quilladin. And... Um, he finally showed up, and I was using a Breloom, who has False Swipe and Spore. Great way to, you know, catch stuff. Um, 
Spore doesn't work because it's a grass type Pokemon and they're immune. Uh-huh. They're immune to powder moves. Um, so I just went with false swipe and then I was going to, you know, throw an ultra ball. I did not know that Quilada knows takedown. Uh oh. And the move takedown has recoil damage. Sure does. So my one HP Quilada and used takedown and killed himself. So that was very unfortunate. Yeah. Because it didn't, it took another six hours probably of shiny hunting. <laughs> uh, however, I didn't get any other shinies in between. Mm-hmm. It was Quilladin again when it was shiny. So I'll take that. That's good. Like, no. that was great. Um, so that was unfortunate, but it worked out. I got Quilladin. I also got Frogadier. The show will have a Greninja soon. Mm. Great shiny. Um, I really wanted to take my my Inke, and which had suction cups, by the way. It oh, has good. two possible abilities. I got really lucky. Uh-huh. Oh, also, I should I should mention that Friend Safari Pokemon have a higher chance of having their hidden abilities, mm. and it's the only way to get the hidden abilities. And the Quilladin I did get that didn't kill himself has his hidden ability. Oh, that's cool. So it was actually even better, probably. So I'll take that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the my now Malamar. Uh, did have suction cups that was awesome i was like i'm gonna go shiny hunt corsola i'm gonna take a break from friend safari because i love shiny corsola yeah such a good shiny so i went and did this right after i got shiny ink got shiny ink i um just gave it like a one rare candy to evolve it into malamar and um i was gonna start uh fish chaining yeah. so Basically, that means you stay in one spot, you fish, you pull up a Pokemon, you battle it. You can either battle it, catch it, or kill it, or run away, I mean. It doesn't matter. Uh, Mm -hmm. That won't break your chain, thankfully. You just can't move from that spot, and you can't ever fail a fish. Mm. It has to bite every time, and you have to pull up every time. Mm. So if there's not a nibble or whatever, the chain's broken. That's why suction cups is so important, because it just makes Pokemon more common. Um, so I go over to the, the, the river where Corsola is. I fish, I pull it up. Shiny Corsola. Nice. First, First try. Pokemon. I went from Inke, got, got a shiny Inke, went to the river, pulled up a shiny Corsola. Mm-hmm. That was not, that was one in 1,326. Yeah. That Corsola. I hadn't started a chain yet, so there was no bonus odds it wasn't in a friend safari that was just on a riverbank <laughs> absolutely insane i could not believe it was blue like because i knew the shiny was blue mm-hmm. and so when, when it appeared and it was blue i was like oh yeah corsola there it is <laughs> but i didn't go wait that's a shot hang on a second yeah. one of the most insane moments ever yeah. so that that was just absolutely mind-blowing <laughs> And then this game, it just beats you down and just, yeah. it says, oh, that was nice, huh? That was cool, right? Um, <laughs> I decided I really want to Fletch Ender. Mm. That's a great, uh, that whole line is fantastic. Fletchling, Talonflame, mm-hmm. one of the best birds. It's got yeah, a good sh- I, I really like that Yeah, I know too. even you like that. Um, it's got a great shiny. It's like a darker red and kind of like this brown uh, belly and stuff. Um I have, and I had like five different fire safaris, I think. Well, like three fire, two flying safaris that all had Fletchender. Oh, yeah. I was like, this will be no problem. One in 500, right? Yeah. Um, I was hunting Fletchender for four days. Uh huh. One in 500. I was on, and I got it at phase 10. <laughs> phase 10. So you found nine other Pokemon? I found nine other shinies. Nine other shinies. Including uh, three Ponyta, which I showed you a little of these. I got two uh, Panseers. I got two Charmeleons, mm-hmm. which I'll take a shiny Charizard, I guess. Yeah. Um, I got multiple flying types. I don't even have... I moved some of them to my other games. I don't have them all with me. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got nine other shinies <laughs> before <laughs> I got Fletchender. Um, that was heinous. Yeah. <laughs> that was extremely painful yeah and that kind of soured this whole thing a little bit uh i just had to remember the corsola i was like i have to remember my i do have good luck i swear the luck evens out (laughs) it evens out exactly so yeah that was 
that was good. Oh yeah, here's the other two. I have two pyroars as well right here. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, both female. A male one would have been cool. Um, and then I got multi- two two other flying types too. So, uh, <laughs> I did want to go with one more, mostly to uh, like send it over to my Pokemon X playthrough. Okay. Um, I wanted an Eevee, hmm. obviously, because Sylveon is a Gen Six Pokemon and has an absolutely amazing shiny. It's no. like blue instead of pink. Looks fantastic. Um, that one was Phase Four. I got four of the shinies. I have an Apom. Two Lillipups and a Minchino. Okay. That I got. All decent shinies and decent Pokemon. Actually, Apoms is really cool. I let me I know you guys can't see this audience, but it's like a really vibrant pink. It's kind of cute. Oh, interesting. Okay. Kind of cute. Um and I finally got the EV, but even though it was phase four, it was like it didn't take that long. It yeah. was like it was like two shiny hunting sessions, I think. Mm. I think it was it was still very lucky. So that was the last one I did. Uh, recently but yeah 34 shinies mm-hmm. from the friend safari and so in my pokemon x playthrough that i'm doing now all shiny uh, i have a shiny starter frogadier that'll be a greninja soon mm. i have a hone edge which i caught wild in the sh- in in a while ago i have the esper that i bred for i have a clef key that i did i did a uh, horde shiny hunting for that one mm. and then i got a halucha who okay. has a really good shiny i never really loved halucha before mm. but um insanely good shiny this is all gen 6 pokemon by the yeah. way all shiny all gen 6 uh and then the fifth one is um i did my first fossil shiny hunt that's right yeah. that was the last one um because tyrant has such a good blue shiny mm. one of the best blue shinies out there um and that I think I only did like 200 resets for that. Mm. Like that was nothing like that was so cool. So in, in general, the luck has been ridiculous. So I really can't complain even about the, the Fletchinder. So yeah, it's those six plus I have the Sylveon Fletchinder and uh, a goo, a Sligu. That's right. I, I I Mm. hunted for Sligu also who has a great shiny too. And one of my favorite, uh, pseudo legendary dragon types actually the yeah. the gudra line i like a lot so yeah i have like nine shinies in that game to like switch between if whoever i want to have in my team anyway it just reminded me how much i like gen 6 pokemon in general yeah and their shinies their shinies are just really good because like trevenant is also in this game super good shiny it's like blue like white and red mm-hmm. um the hardest one is going to be carbink Okay. Do you remember Carbink? Yeah. Yeah. So that the Pokemon. Bunny crystal. <laughs> yeah. So it's like really good shiny. It's like mm. all black, the rock, and then yeah. the jewels are super blue. Like it's a really good shiny. But um, <laughs> it's only, uh, you can only find it in the reflection cave, mm-hmm. only in hordes. And it's only one of the Pokemon in a horde. Mm. It's not all five Pokemon. Oh. It's like a random encounter in a horde. So that one, I might have to like breed for or something. Mm. That one will be would be very difficult. So but that's probably going to be the hardest one to hunt out of all of the Gen Six Pokemon. So yeah. it's not bad. Yeah, like after those nine Pokemon, I also have like Pyroar and Noibat and Pumpkaboo, Phantom, Quilladin, Malamar. Yeah, Breaks and I already had Shiny from this game. Like I'm, I'm over halfway, I think yeah. to all of the shiny Pokemon in gen six already. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> friend safari hunting is insane. Like, I think it's a really good way to get into shiny hunting. Mm. If, and if, if anyone's a little like trepidatious about it, uh, about putting in all the time into shiny hunting, but you really want a shiny, I think that's a great way to start because yeah. the odds are just amazing. Especially if you have a friend like me who could give you all the Pokemon in the whole decks and yeah. then you can get the shiny charm because that makes it even better because so, without shiny charm it's like one in 900 so how has friends safari changed with the with them taking stuff off oh yeah so with it, with it being offline now um you can't ever add a friend over the internet mm. if if they if they live in a different country or something yeah. you can't you cannot add them as a friend that just doesn't even work 
on okay. the system anymore. Um, and so even if they go online, well, that you can't go online. Right. So if you have only the two slots and not the third one with them, you can never get the third one. Okay. Now it's, it's just over unless they're local, mm. local communication still works. And that counts there. You yeah. can become friends and be online with each other. So for instance, I have a second 2DS. Right. Like, uh, and I put Alpha Sapphire in that. Mm-hmm. And I was able to get my friend Safari from my 2DS, which is like a bug one, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and get all three slots in this game. So yeah. with friends locally, you can still do it. So that's really nice. But otherwise, you're screwed. Whatever you, whatever Safaris you have is what you have now. No. That's, it's permanent, basically. Um, it's interesting. If you... Even even when it was online, if you remove a friend from mm-hmm. your list, you lose their friend Safari, but they don't lose yours. Interesting. Okay. Which is interesting. So it's a way you can like help people out, basically. I saw a lot of people doing that on Reddit back back when you could. Um, you would add them, they'd be online, and then you would just tell them, okay, I've got you. And they're like, cool, and they would unfriend you because mm. they need the slots or whatever. They need yeah. the, the friend space, but you got their Safari, so... No. Yeah. So once you have a Safari, it's yours unless you remove the friend. Okay. So hmm. I'm sitting at a hundred friend safaris. Yeah. Um, most of them unique. Like, I think to have every single unique Pokemon, you only need like seventy something safaris. Yeah. So yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot more hunts I want to do still too. Like Spiritomb is still in there. Really good shiny. Uh, Absol. I really want to shiny hunt that. Um, quite a few. I'll want to do a lot of the ones that have mega evolutions. Mm. Like, oh, I have I have a couple with routes. So I could get a oh, shiny yeah. Gardevoir and Gallade, which would be really cool. So nice. Cause, especially because they have mega evolutions in this game. So and mega shinies are different usually mm-hmm. than um than the regular shinies. Like, I'm actually kind of glad that I have the two Charmeleons mm-hmm. because the um Mega Charizard Y and Mega Charizard X have radically different shinies yeah and so i could have both basically uh, mm-hmm. which would be pretty cool so yeah i think like x is like kind of purple and like really cool looking so kind of happy about that um yeah like one of the ones i hunted specifically was Shepet in the friend safari mm. because mega bennett has a great shiny yeah and it's pretty strong too so that was fun yeah bennett's like blue Blue shinies are really nice yeah. <laughs> in general. Blue shinies are good. I tend to be a fan. Like, yeah, the three shiny Ponyta I have, I'm not sad about that because Ponyta yeah. has an amazing shiny. Yeah, so. Yep, it was uh, it was a very fun few days except for the Fletchender part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm sitting at right now. Um, still, now I'm just going to play through X with all my, <laughs> my whole shiny team, no. which is really fun. Uh, I was planning on playing through X with the shiny charm mm-hmm. and like, you know, getting to maybe collect some shinies along the way. But um, I had a very unfortunate realization mm-hmm. that you can only get the shiny charm if the Professor Sycamore can examine your national Pokedex. You don't get the national Pokedex until the post game. <laughs> right. So he can't examine it, therefore cannot give you the shiny charm. So impossible to get. Unless it's post game, so yeah. very unfortunate. But, but yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you I gonna got, do? I got to do a shiny playthrough anyway. So, well, and they're all go. traded Pokemon, so they're they <clears throat> <laughs> level up really quickly. Too. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's that. But anyway, there it is. I talked cool. for half an hour. <laughs> yep. But it was really fun, and it's fun to just look at them now and just be like, ah, look at all my accomplishments. <laughs> yeah. So I have a lot of rebirth to talk about, but I'm saving it for the Final next Fantasy. episode. I'm going to save that for the next episode because for sure. So it'll be a while, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to say so, like between our last recording and this recording, I have beaten the game. Yes. And I have since done some more stuff to like get. Not I'm. There is no way I'm going to platinum the game. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely no chance. But I have like tried to complete as much as I think I can and yeah. as much as I can stand to try to do. Gotcha. And so as a result, I've put like 135 hours into the game. Uh, wow. Uh, 
and like Which for you especially is a lot yeah uh, so like more than half of that i think has been since i recorded the last episode so i've got a yeah. lot to talk about there <laughs> um so next episode is a big rebirth episode yep so in the episode before the last episode, Ooh, we we're talked going, about we're going way back. We talked about get out your notes. That everybody. list of iconic video game characters. Oh, that's right. And after I edited the episode, I couldn't stop thinking about <laughs> that. I mean, it was painful, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And so, oh man, I have I have some stuff. That, so that took over the internet for a whole. So day first, there. let me talk about the um the little journey i went down <laughs> on Brian's trying to come up on a journey everybody come up with my own uh with with a with a more accurate iconic character okay. list so i started with the wikipedia article for best selling video games of all time just right. s- individual titles that sold the best mm-hmm. um I'll be honest, I don't remember it very well, but <laughs> I know Minecraft, I think, was number one. Yeah, yeah. I think. Did you know, sorry to break to break this up, new data came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo just posted their most recent, uh, like, sales data, mm-hmm. and the Switch is, like, is on track to become, to overcome the PS2. Yeah. It's really close now. Wow. I think it did overtake the DS, finally. Yeah. And, yeah, it's very close to becoming the most sold and yeah. uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh-huh. is now the mo- the best-selling Nintendo game of all time. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was high on this yeah. list. Ins- um, insane. Tetris was in two still, different spots on the list. Tetris, though. And like, one of them uh, was just EA's version from, like, 2009 or something. Wow. Just that version of Tetris alone. Because, obviously, there's been a bunch of different there's versions so of many. Tetris. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, though. Um, so I was looking through that list, and I'm like, okay, this this doesn't feel right. Yeah. Okay. Basing basing the purely list of characters sales. purely on individual yeah. game titles just didn't feel right. So sure. then I Series. tried um, best selling games by year. Okay. And while that was enlightening, that also didn't really feel right. <laughs> Interesting, but not really right. Because I was okay. cause I had the thought like, okay, what would the list be if you were making it in 1995? And then what yeah. would it have been like? And so then I found the article that was best-selling game franchises of all time. Okay. And this felt much more appropriate. So definitely I have compiled a list based on that list. Okay. And the, I have not determined the order of this list. That was purely based on the, 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 the article that I was reading the yeah. Wikipedia page. So it is based on real numbers, not on my opinion. Okay. The only, t- the only time my opinion entered this is what games I decided to include in the list. So I had a, I had a set of criteria. If the game, it, 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 part of it is the genre of the game. So like Tetris doesn't have any characters in it. So that right. type of game just was not included. The in little the Tetraminos don't count yeah. as characters. Um, I decided I agree, to do a so. blanket no fighting games because for the most part, they're niche. That well, it's not in that so opinion, much but. for me. It's fighting games for the most part don't have a single character right. that is like more iconic than all the rest. A number one, basically. Yeah. Like, like with Street Fighter, for instance, Chun Li and Ryu and right. Ken are very recognizable characters but still, that are very well known. That's but, not a single yeah. character. But yeah, yeah it's not a even single just character. Ryu and Chun Li. Yeah, that's two characters. <laughs> So, yeah. So, I just said no on fighting games in general. Yeah. And then... That's fine. I basically, think. I there was also a subjective, do I think there are any really, uh, truly iconic characters from this game at all? And if the answer was no, I didn't include it. Right. So, here is the list. Brian's list. Starting at number 20, because I think it, it it's, always, it's more dramatic to start Ooh. at the bottom and work your way to the <laughs> so top. So dramatic. All right, so number 20 is Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Let's go. Number 19. My friends are my power. Mega Man. Uh-huh. Number 18, Nathan Drake from Uncharted. Okay, yeah. Number 17, Pac-Man. Uh-huh. Number 16, Iconic. Kirby. Kirby. Number 15, Crash Bandicoot. Crash was higher on this list than I expected. Yeah, but Crash is, but yeah. yeah, he's big. Number 14, Solid Snake from Metal Gear. Heck yeah. 
Number 13, Kratos from God of War. Okay. Number 12, Geralt from The Witcher. Okay. A lot of people played The Witcher. Yep. Master Chief from Halo is number Heck 11. Yeah. Number 10. Uh, so I, I wasn't sure on this one, but okay. I picked Lilith from Borderlands. Okay. Do you think that's... Do you agree? I would swap her and Master Chief. No, sorry. But... Let me rephrase. Do you agree that of the Borderlands yes. characters, Absolutely. Lilith? Okay, because Borderlands definitely outsold Halo. Well, it outsold, yeah, yeah. But, but it's Master Chief. Oh yeah, no. Again, this is uh, the rank. Yeah. The where they are in the list is not from my choice okay. or my opinion. Okay. Um. Next, uh, number nine, Arthur Morgan from Red Dead. Okay. Yeah. I believe from Red Dead Redemption 2 in particular, which yeah. I think is the most popular of the group yeah, anyway. For sure. Uh, number eight, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. Yep. Okay. So she did make it into the top ten. Not number one. Shocking. Yeah. Number seven, Link from The Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Number six, Leon from Resident Evil. Wow. Yeah. I'm okay with that. As far as I can tell, he seems to be the most well-known... Yeah, individual I character mean, Chris from the series is up there, and uh, Claire is up there. But yeah. but yeah, I'm good with Leon. Yeah, RE um, four is one of the most popular. So. Yeah, number five, Sonic. Heck yeah. Number four, Cloud from Final Fantasy. Heck yeah. Cloud is easily the most iconic protagonist Easy. from the Final Fantasy series. From any Final Fantasy ever. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh. If you're including antagonists, Sephiroth could maybe be more He's <laughs> iconic too. than Cloud. Yeah. But yeah. He should be in every game. Yeah. Number three, Steve from Minecraft. Yep. Which still feels kind of weird to me just because for so many years, I uh, like he didn't have a name. Yeah. So, but anyway. But his look is very iconic. So. Yes. Number two, Pikachu from Heck Pokemon. Yeah. And number one. Mario. Mario. Because Woo-hoo! Mario is the best selling franchise of all time. Yeah. I did include an honorable mentions list. Okay. And uh, my criteria was much less firm on this. This is more of a I looked at the list and I went, no, they should they should be they somewhere. Should, yeah. They so, deserve it. On, in honorable mentions, we have Donkey Kong. Yeah. <laughs> we have Ezio. Okay. We yep. have Ellie. Ellie. Yep. Uh, Dante from Devil Don't May Cry. Cry. Nice. Clementine from uh, from Walking Dead yeah. series, yeah, sure. Um, Gordon Freeman, yeah, heck yeah, Half Life. Glados, yeah. Ratchet, Ratchet, yeah. Ratchet and Clank's good. And Rayman, Rayman, yep. Samus, Samus. Spyro, he's, he's a dragon. Yep. And Shepard from Mass Effect. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep good good leading characters yeah so that's that's i think i think that's a, a list that as good as people, people in do. general can mostly agree with at least understand yeah because it is and at least there sales, are, yeah so. there is l- logic there as to why yeah i think one mario two pikachu is indisputable mm-hmm. but agreed that's just that's just me i guess yeah and, like, we personally would put Master Chief higher on the list. Higher than a few of those. But um, also, that was the Xbox we played. Right. We haven't played Red Dead and stuff like yeah. that. So. But I also, I, th- I think about, so there are games I've never played that have characters that I I know fairly well. Like, Very I even true. know things about them that, like, and I think you that, would think you'd only know from yeah. playing the game. I think but, that makes yeah. Character was more iconic. Just yeah. Did that being like, true, you know, I've never so. played a Tomb Raider game. Oh, yeah. I, I, I 100% know who, who Lara Croft is, what she's all about. And yep. like, yeah. So absolutely. She's iconic. Yeah. Just not number one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, no offense to Lara Croft. Yeah. Um, and like, I've never played a Crash Bandicoot game. Mm-hmm. I've never played. They're good. I've, I'm not sure I've ever actually played Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah, I know who Chun Li is. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we were never big fighting game people. So. Yeah, no. Yeah, I did not know any of the characters from Tekken. I had to ask yeah. you. <laughs> Tekken's actually kind of cool. I think yeah. if I were to get into a fighting game, it would probably yeah. be Tekken. Well, and Tekken as a franchise is just a little better selling than Street Fighter. Yeah. So, 
well it's cool so i think it's the best selling like pure arcade style fighting game yeah Ser- uh, franchise it's fun because you could be a big bear and be silly <laughs> you should watch donkey's videos of tekken yeah it's just him being a bear and fighting people nice uh, oh, his name's goodness. just kuma there's just a bear named kuma who just is a bear yeah on, standing on his hind legs <laughs> it's awesome it's like salt, that's a good fighting game in character. salty vet uh heck yeah m bison but also literal bison literal bison <laughs> yeah good stuff so um just a couple of little tidbits i like to when i see something online that's about gaming and i think is interesting i like to toss it into the show notes when i'm actually making notes yeah so someone came up with a high res halo 2 mod Ooh. they were able to get halo 2 running at 720p okay but like with the same textures and stuff and everything yeah um i think that's they cool. they did ultimately make a make some hardware upgrades to the xbox but yeah they actually weren't necessary for most of what he did it was mostly i think cool. code changes that's pretty neat it was you only needed the hardware upgrade to get like the the best performance max. basically yeah yeah that's cool and along the same lines so it seems the there has been a shift away from graphic fidelity to pure frames per second yeah absolutely people to the point where people frames. think that is the most important thing ever yeah and, and if it's only 30 frames per second it's trash yeah and it just makes me so happy that i could not care less about frames per second yep i've 30 frames per second has been burned into my eyes yep. from bur- from birth i'm good with 30 frames <laughs> like, per second just nearly every movie i've ever watched was displayed to me at 30 frames per second whether mm-hmm. it was filmed that way doesn't really matter mm-hmm. um you, you most videos i have watched online were at 30 frames per second most video games i played were somewhere around 30 frames per second yeah. I don't care about higher frame rates, and I hope I never care yep. about it. I hope I can continue to just enjoy my low frame rates. I genuinely believe a stable 30 yes. is, is all you need. That's a big deal to me. Stable, in fact, yes. like, I want, uh, in general, I want the game to be locked to the lowest uh, frame rate that I will ever experience during the game. Yeah. What I don't like is when I'm running at like 100 FPS and it drops to 60 or something because it's loading a bunch of stuff, a bunch of textures. Yeah. I don't, I would rather it's play like, the whole uh, game at 60 than absolutely. to be playing at 100 and have it drop to yeah, 60. Only sometimes. Yeah. 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 That's like no question. That's worse. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a big discourse with the Thousand Year Door remake. Yeah. People found out it was 30 frames instead of 60 <laughs> and were very angry about it. I think that is a very stupid thing to yes. be angry about, especially with how gorgeous that game looks, how much a, optimization they've done for it to work on the Switch. Oh my God. Of a game from either the N64 or GameCube era. Yeah. Like, who cares? The part of the whole aesthetic was also yeah. how do you expect like the switch doesn't run at 60 basically yeah. never runs at 60 like what are you talking about uh-huh. did you really think it was going to be 60 yeah makes no sense at all like they they you play scarlet and violet and no it of course it's not going to be 60 frames per yeah. second like what are you talking about like but then you play breath of the wild and you're like they make 30 look amazing yeah <laughs> like clearly they are optimizing well it's gonna be fine like i mean you could accuse us of just being nintendo sympathizers but i mean yeah whatever (laughs) compared to the stupid things other companies are doing right now uh i should mention that um everyone hates microsoft right now Uh uh-huh they laid off a lot of employees shut down like four studios like a lot yeah. of, of small indie studios. Get, it, really awful. I've like, so I work in the tech industry and there were a lot of in, uh, uh, layoffs in the tech industry, yeah. but it seems like video, the video game industry is Dude, uh, having like more than anyone. The game industry is 
fall apart it's a little bit. It's imploding, kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for indie developers and Nintendo. Yeah. Sony and Microsoft are falling apart, and yeah. EA and ga- companies like that. Like, at the same time, EA just put out a thing where they're like, we're experimenting putting ads, like banner ads, inside the game, and yeah. like all these things. <laughs> like, everyone hates you. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> like... Yeah, absolutely just, insane. EA just has know. to mess up badly enough that liking their titles is no longer enough, yeah, and then exactly. they they will. I don't know crumble. how they're still around. I guess yeah. the sports games is probably keeping them alive. But yeah, the sports games yeah. and I, uh, yeah, the, the the Star Wars games. Yeah, but even those, you know, are doing that well. Like they yeah. did, they did fine, but yeah, so. like yeah, like if. Like, if Activision pulled what they were doing, the yeah. only COD would keep them alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, listen, what are you going to do? <laughs> the, it's good to be a Nintendo fan right now. <laughs> along those lines, the former president of Blizzard said <laughs> gamers should tip game devs. Amazing. <laughs> amazing (laughs) and you know what's funny is actually a lot of people were like you know i wouldn't mind that but like but clear like surely you'd be (laughs) taking some off the top right like i don't know just like i I don't trust that at all out of touch is no longer a strong enough (laughs) phrase to describe yeah very true Uh, that's hilarious uh do you see that thing about pokemon go avatars and them being like really oh, weird horrible they <laughs> look horrible. so bad yeah i don't know what they did man i don't know what they're <laughs> thinking yeah that's i don't know what niantic's doing yeah <laughs> i stay out of it kind of i don't know man. uh that's also so, so there, there was a hacker news article about uh <laughs> nes cartridges and i didn't oh. realize this but you could kind of make game cartridges do like anything yeah they so they, the way they worked back then is they connected directly to the system bus. So, like, you could have code in there to just, like... Change could, the system. You could basically... You could have a CPU on a card and expand the processing power of an NES. Wow. Yeah, I did not know and that. And, like, okay. people have done that. That's really interesting. Like, you could, you could put kind of anything, and then yeah. as long as it's got the right connector at the end, you just plug it in, That's and awesome. you can run whatever code or Dude, whatever. I love <laughs> old old tech like that is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it just r- works so weird. Like, I was just telling, actually, Mom about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that uh, a lot of people know this, but uh, the Super Nintendo had a cartridge called the Super Game Boy. Yeah. You place a Game Boy cartridge in and you could play your Game Boy on the, the TV. Uh-huh. And the way they made that work was to have the Super Game Boy cartridge just have an entire Game Boy inside of it. <laughs> it just had the entire like motherboard and every, and slot yeah. and everything of a Game Boy inside yeah. of it. Like, hey, I guess it works, right? Yeah. Oh, like that is so hilarious to me. Mm-hmm. So, listen, back then they just made stuff work. Yep. And in general, they're still Nintendo's very good at like simple optimizing, like condensing. Like Nintendo games are so small compared to like any other video game, especially mm-hmm. Western games. Like Breath of the Wild being just like a few gigs, basically. Yeah, it's like I think Breath of the Wild is like seven gigs or something, mm-hmm. as opposed to the three hundred that most AAA games are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just I prefer Nintendo's like thought process on those kind of things. I think yeah. I just yeah they just they just overcomplicate these things. Yeah. I, there is official news on the Switch too. Yeah, um, I saw the president uh, President Furukawa. It's coming by the end of the fiscal year. So before, announcement basically yeah. is coming or an announcement about yeah. it, right? Yeah, but it was the first the time the they've year. ever said anything about it. Yeah, officially. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and just like a random tweet, the president of mm-hmm. Nintendo uh, said, yes, by the end of this fiscal year, there will be news about the successor to the Switch. Yeah. Which is, um, which, you know, proves basically that it's going to be a Switch 2, sort of. Yeah. Sort of like how the Wii U was an expansion of the Wii. Yeah. Um, and so, but I'm good with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen Sounds stuff about the me. PS5 Pro, but like I just got a PS5, so I'm almost certainly going <laughs> to so, skip the PS5 so Pro altogether. Yeah, it's like, 
and the PS5 is like three games or something. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's so, so weird. I don't know. Like, um, so I guess I guess this isn't a new thing for PlayStation. So PlayStation, I think, out of all the consoles, was the one to do this the most. Was to have a regular unit and then a different unit. So like with the PS2, you had the regular and then the slim line. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't remember what they had with the PS3. They had a slim also. They had a slim one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then with the PS4, they had the Pro and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, with the regular Xbox, I don't remember there being any special edition. Yeah. Uh, only like, uh, like a, cosmetic a, a, only. A, yeah, an Xbox yeah. Pro or anything like that. There were there were different hardware revisions, and I know that because yeah. I have a different motherboard than... Yes. But but that was, that was like silent, but basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it was, and then it wasn't until the Xbox 360, which mm-hmm. they then they had the Elite, and then they had the e. like the E and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then yep. GameCube was just only ever the GameCube. The GameCube. <laughs> so but yeah, even the the Game Boy Advance SP yeah. had two versions. Yeah. Um, the zero zero one and the one hundred one model mm-hmm. model versions, and the one hundred one basically just had uh, two brighter brightness settings. Yeah. There was and it was much brighter than the original SP, which yeah. is really nice actually. But uh, and nowadays it makes it go for a hundred more dollars. Yeah. So. But yeah, now um, I feel like every generation there's there's a regular and there's a pro or a, a pro. plus or a yeah whatever. It makes it like feel kind of lame to have the original. Yeah. But like you don't want to spend that much just to get a slightly uh-huh. better console so it's like, like i either yeah. it's like i feel like i either need to wait for the pro version <laughs> right? and then buy that but then it's always really expensive so yeah. i just don't care i don't bother personally yeah. either it's just um, like so i didn't get a ps4 pro yeah and i'm not gonna get a ps5 pro yeah i prefer usually the the cheaper more compact versions anyway yeah like having a switch and a switch light is yeah. awesome i think <laughs> like it's really nice so yeah. yeah that's what actually, i have now actually the the ds is the one exception yeah i'm so glad i got the new 3ds xl mm-hmm. or not xl i actually just have a new 3ds yeah which was which is one of the most sought after ones yeah. now because it's it, the screen is a little bigger than a regular 3ds but not as big as an xl mm-hmm. but it's a new so it has the, the faster processor yeah so it's like a weird in between but it has the changeable face plates it's got like these colored buttons that are really nice yeah. like I I feel like I have the ultimate. I'm like holding it right now. I have yeah. the ultimate 3ds basically. Uh, um, I think eventually I do want to get a new 2ds XL, which, okay. which does exist. Uh, so it's still foldable, even though it's a 2ds, hmm. but it's a new XL. So it's really big yeah. and has the faster processor. Yeah, it's one of the last ones they ever released. Mm. They're like you know over 200 bucks now because they're pretty sought after. But I think I might get one and mod it someday. Okay, and actually mod it and put you know ds games on it or something but but yeah cool anyway nintendo does do that with handhelds especially i feel like yeah with the different color variations and special versions and and stuff like that but so when i had reached the point where i thought i was gonna be done with rebirth yeah and wasn't gonna do anymore i went and played pokemon shield oh yeah and you beat it right yeah Nice. Pretty quick, and yeah. uh, it. I really like Sword and Shield, just know, like just like we saw uh, said in our like second or third yeah, ever I episode. Like, played yeah. through Sword again, as you know, yeah. just to get Zacian for my living decks, and yep, it was fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> great game. <laughs> um, I will say, so I had a similar problem in this playthrough that I did in the first playthrough, and that it was it okay. took a while to decide on my team and yeah. uh so like i spent like 80 percent of the game without my like dream team yeah. and then only had yeah the team i actually wanted at the very end of the game basically. yeah understandable that one it's it's you have a lot of options mm-hmm. early game but i mean it's still a pokemon game yeah where some of the really good ones are basically at the end of the game yeah so. well and also like but, I am very good at coming up with an up to Gen 5 team mm. that is really good. But then you add Fairy into the mix and mm-hmm. just there's so many type. In order to get enough type coverage for, for what I want, for like I need so yeah. many types on my team. Yeah. So like I'm looking at good dual types. Mm-hmm. I had a, So 
back in 2011. So Gen 5 was out, but Gen 6 hadn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. I I come I put together a spreadsheet that it was all the Pokemon everything basically by their stats and then and fairy type types. came out. <laughs> and so I didn't Oh crap. I added Gen 6 at one point a few years later uh-huh. and then I hadn't updated it since so I finally just now added oh, wow. Gen 7 through 10. Wow. To this list. It's a lot of Pokemon to mm-hmm. add. Yeah, it sure 400, is. 400 Pokemon. And so I, I've uh, now got that again so that I can filter by stats and just see, okay, what's uh, what's the best rock type in the game? What's the best? Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. My team for this one, I picked... Good luck remembering, remembering all six. Yeah. Uh, I picked Sobble <laughs> as my starter. Until and for, cool. yeah. for like over half the game, I just had the team of things I caught in the first hour of yeah. gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, like Lulu, I had, or like so yamper. i had like a thievel yeah. and um i did have a yamper which i kept yeah. bolton because it's it's actually pretty good it's pretty good and you um, like you like electric types in general mm-hmm. so well i was gonna have an electric time no matter what but yeah. uh wasn't certain it was going to be bolton but for sure he's very fast and yes. that was helpful um I would hope so with Bolt in the name. Yes. And like a very sleek looking dog. I had, uh, so I had a Colossal. Oh, yeah. Awful, and so, awful Pokemon. Yeah, his offensive stats were pretty terrible. Well, like he's useful in like some weird meta, like well, competitive stuff. That, t- but... that type coverage of Rock and Fire is really yeah, useful, but his offensive stats were just garbage. Right, yeah. Um, so I had him and then I didn't have him and then I put him back on my team because I just needed the type coverage. Uh-huh. Um, I had a Hitmonchan for a little bit with oh. all of the punches. So yeah. like that's really fun to do. Yeah. So like Mega Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Fire Punch. So that coverage was, that was fun. Or not not Mega Punch. It was Drain Punch, which is yeah good. Drain Punch is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did. I had a Hatterene in my sh- for Ooh, original Hatterene's Sword great. Yeah. playthrough, and I did. I had one again on my Shield play- playthrough. Nice. Because it was just a reliable, good Pokemon. Yeah. It's funny how common the Fairy Psychic is in that game. Because you have Hatterene, Gardevoir, and uh, Galarian uh, Rapidash. Yeah. Are all <laughs> Fairy Psychic. Yeah. Which is funny. I had a... Um, in my Sword playthrough, I had Galarian Rapidash. Mm-hmm. Which I'd never used before, but I always wanted to. Because it's such a gorgeous, you know, unicorn design. Yeah. And yeah, it was my ace. It was a beast, yeah. dude. It was so good. Yeah. That, that was fun. <clears throat> so, all right. Let's see how many I've remembered. So, okay. in, Inteleon, Hatterene, Colossal, Boltund. This is final team? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Corviknight. Corviknight. Because I Great. need... Because uh, there was Corviknight. no way I wasn't going to have a Corviknight. I was yeah. going to have a flying type, One and I needed Galar a steel Pokemon type period. to counter... Um, fairy. Fairy. Yeah. Yeah, perfect against fairy. fairy in this game. Yeah, and he's very cool. And this time I gave up having an ice type and instead had oh. um used fairy as my anti dragon. Uh huh. I finally embraced fairy type. Heck, <laughs> like yeah. I've have had ha- fairy types on a few playthroughs, but it's having fairy probably types, my man. least used type. Yeah. Well, that's not true. I don't use bug or poison it's really up, at all. It's but, up there for know. me now. It's like ghost like water and and fairy is like all i use basically yeah <laughs> so, um for most things and of course the, the sixth, sixth poke impossible never to remember remember i got to use a golurk for one. the first time yeah in that playthrough and it was so good yeah because he has the iron fist ability mm-hmm. makes it so any punching move does like 30 percent extra damage oh wow absolutely ridiculous <laughs> he was such a beast he had Shadow Punch, which yeah. is already, like, doesn't miss ever. Mm-hmm. And it just, like, and I think it has a higher crit rate or something, too. Plus yeah. Iron Fist. Anyway, it was ridiculous. Oh, that's right. Pangoro. Oh, cool. Yeah, Because Pangoro's Dark great. Fighting was a really good combo. He's cool. That's a Gen 6 For type coverage. So, yeah. I need to shiny hunt that. Yeah. It's got a great so, shiny. So, Dark covered Ghost and Psychic. Um, and then Fighting, fighting covered... Uh, all, the, all the things fighting covers and yeah so that wound up being my final team and it was really easy to yeah. <laughs> just steamroll everybody I mean, it's a fairly easy game in general but... yeah it is um 
I really wanted a particular outfit, and I just uh, for my character, and oh, I yeah. sort of kind of got it in the end, but, but it, it was really not really what out. I was exactly what I was looking for. That is a shame. I was essentially looking for Lily's outfit yeah. in uh, Gen like, Six, elegant in, white, or basically. not Gen Six, yeah. but um, uh, Sun, uh, and Moon. Sun and Moon. Yeah. Which, like, that's that's like kind of an anime girl archetype is the yeah. the girl with the white dress and the big floppy white very, hat. Yeah, very much so. so. I was going for that, and they didn't have it. I'm like, why? This like, is come like, on. this is a Japanese game. <laughs> yeah, but you're in you're in Britain. Yeah. So, so you had to wear hoodies and plaid. Yeah. Mostly. Uh, good. Times. All right, I think that does it for this episode. In the next one, I'm going to talk all about Rebirth and Queen's Blood, <laughs> the card game in Rebirth. And I do want to talk about. Uh, some of the deals I've been getting. Okay. And I've been playing some Guitar Hero. Right. So I do want to talk about that at some point. Yeah. But uh, that will have to wait for a future episode of the Brothers Game Podcast. Woo! Woo! Which you just listened to. I do actually just want to mention real quick, this is the final weekend for Rooster Teeth. Yeah. This is the official end of it. And um, Rooster Teeth has meant a lot to me for a long time. Um, obviously, we watched Red vs. Blue when we were... You yep. know, kids basically uh but then i got into achievement hunter and their let's plays very early in my teenage years so like over 10 years ago at this point um and i've followed them ever since mm -hmm. so it's kind of a huge uh kind of a huge thing that's happening here i mean they've been an I icons of the internet yeah. for a long time so very sad but thankfully a lot of their you know podcasts they do now are continuing um and so, yeah, if you ever want to go down memory lane with Rooster Teeth, check out the rtarchive.org. Hmm. And that has every video they've ever made, including their, their like, premium content that was paywalled. Hmm. And you can watch any of it all the time, oh, wow. which is really cool. Uh, it's a really great little archive that fans put together. Nice. So rest in peace, Rooster Teeth. Much love to them. And if you want to follow us on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, you can go at the Brothers G Pod and see with what we're doing see okay. my shiny hunts mostly yep. please do download the podcast we like to see them downloads we love seeing that number just slowly tick up oh when it goes from three to four i'm like whoa yeah, it's, yeah it's great. let's go it's the highlight of my week okay a little more than that thankfully but yeah. <laughs> thank you for listening so so much if you're on youtube please subscribe um uh, you know hit give us a comment um tell me about your friend safari in in Pokemon yeah. or how much you hate sword and shield next and why whatever that's fine oh. anyway that's it for us good night everybody good night <laughs>